shall we begin our english service hi sing to the lord a new song sing to the lord all the earth sing to the lord bless his name proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day declare his glory among the nations his wonders among all people let us all sing dark solis praise god from who all blessings flow with him all creature help be lord praise him above he hallelujah Son and Holy Ghost, Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this day that you have given us this opportunity to be present in the worship service. We praise you and worship you, Lord. Thank you for the salvation you have given us and made us the heads of and citizens of your heaven be bless be with us lord bless each one of us make this english service as a blessed one in our lives jesus name we pray amen our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into the temptations but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom for power and glory for ever and ever amen shall we sing uh, song number 2 of our songs book holy 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 Sky and sea, 
Shall we read the word of God? I request our General Secretary Vinod Kumar to come and read our scripture. For today's meditation, the scripture portion is taken from the New Testament, that is Romans, third chapter, 9 to 18 verses. Romans, third chapter, 9 to 18 verses. What then? Are we better than they? No. No one wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteousness, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable, there is none that doth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sep sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Let the word of God be blessed in our presence. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we worship you as you are holy and a loving God. You are King of King, Lord of Lord. Father, we thank you for the marvelous things you have done in our lives, Lord. Thank you, Father, your touch and your constant presence uh, in the period of a lockdown. Father, we thank you for the protection you have given us from the uh, coronavirus. We recollect all your mercies and faithfulness in day-to-day -day life's Lord. Father, we commit ourselves into your hands and cleanse us from our sins by pouring your holy, precious blood. Lord, let your grace be upon us. Thank you for the online service that we could able to run successfully for all these weeks, Lord. Father, we pray uh, for our pastors, Reverend Moses Kumar and Reverend Ranjit Kumar and their families. Uh, protect them and bless them and uh, make them as a channel of blessing to our church. We also pray for Sexton Archun, Sound Operator Nani and Bhaskar Rao and protect them and while rendering their services to our church. We pray for our Sunday school children who are uh, your gifts and heritage. And nurture them and keep them a good health Lord. We also uh, pray for uh, the Sunday school uh, teachers who are counting themselves uh, to train your children Lord. Bless them and fill thy spirit and uh, uh, meet their needs, Lord. We also pray for the CE and its members. Uh, fill them with the spirit and use them uh, for the extension of uh, your kingdom. Father, we also pray for the youth in the church. Help them, Lord, uh, to have a born again experience. Lord, those who are uh, seek jobs, help them to get jobs, Lord. We also uh, pray for the uh, choirs, Father. Bless them and protect them 
Lord, really, Lord, we are uh, enjoying uh, their singing in our prisons. Especially, uh, we pray for uh, Vincent, who plays the organ. Uh, bless him, Lord. Help him uh, to score uh, good marks, uh, the exams to come. We also uh, pray for our elders in the church. Lord, uh, fill them uh, with thy strength and also heal them the yes-related uh, uh, disorders. We also pray for our uh, women uh, in the church and their ministry, Lord. Uh, strengthen them and uh, anointing them with thy spirit and uh, help us to use uh, their services in our uh, church, Lord. We also uh, pray for our nation, Lord. Protect our nation uh, from the coronavirus and help our leaders uh, to take uh, right decisions uh, for the safety of uh, citizens and the economy of our country, Lord. Once again, uh, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. I request uh, Reverend Dr. Ranjit Kumar, the pastor of our church, uh, to share a word of God with us. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I once again welcome you all for this Vesper service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I especially thank the chairperson for this evening's worship, Prasan Kumar Garu, the president of the church, and also I thank the secretary, Vinod Kumar, the treasurer, Danny Jason, and also the Secretary of the Board, Mr. Vesh Ratnam. Along with me, I join with my fellow colleague, Reverend Moses. We once again greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Particularly, during the past two months, the church has been very active in rendering the services, especially the preaching and the comforting words through online both in Telugu as well as in the Vesper service. So at this particular time, we wanted to, I wanted to thank personally uh, the team which is behind this along with the church executive and the elders. Uh, I wanted to thank personally uh, Brother Madhu for his effort and also Brother Nani and also Vincent for rendering the music. May God use them mightily in the days to come. So once again, I thank them and I congratulate them for the efforts that they have put in telecasting this message online. The scripture portion for this evening's meditation has been taken from the Paul's letter to Romans chapter 3 verses 9 to 18 onwards. Verses 9 to 18. Let us read verse 9, the, the letter of Paul to the Romans chapter 3 verse 9. What then are we any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin. Both, Both Jews Jew and, and Greeks are, are under the power of, of sin. Sin, sin. Let us Let look us to the Lord, Lord in prayer. prayer. Our, our creator and sustainer and our redeemer, redeemer. We, have we have come to your presence this evening, evening to listen from you. From you. Lord, Lord, you are the source, source of everything. everything. Lord, we Lord, thank we you and praise you for the protection that you have given to us especially to the church, the congregation members during the past two years, during the time of this pandemic situation. Lord, you have made us to understand your word more clearly through the personal interaction, through the time that we have spent personally with you. At this particular time, as we are going to meditate upon your word, 
Lord, speak to us. Speak through us. Let your word inspire us. Let your word correct us. Let your word be a challenging to us in the days to come. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, as we continue to meditate from the letter of Paul to the Roman church, we are in the third chapter. This evening scripture portion has been taken from verses 9 to 18 of the third chapter. Here, from verses 9 to 18, we find Paul is quoting from the different passages from Psalm 14, from Psalm 5, Psalm 150, Psalm 10, Isaiah. So there are different verses that have been quoted by Paul which are summed up from verses 11 to 18. As we have gone through it or as we have read just now, these entire verses from verses 9 to 18 talks about the condition of the human being. Most of us in our lives have an image that somewhat that are different to our reality. I repeat, most of us have an image of ourselves that are somewhat different from the reality. We may feel that we are fatter or thinner than we really. Otherwise, we sometimes believe that we are more smarter than others. At this situation, sometimes it may not be true with everyone. And particularly these verses tells us that the human nature Every day we look at a person as persons, every day we look at ourselves in the mirror. So this passage reveals the truth that we are nothing. We are more sinners in the eyes of God. Paul had just told his readers that the immoral as well as the moral pagan are condemned before the Lord. In the previous verses, we have found out that. Then he tells them that the moral and immoral Jews stand condemned as well. And now Paul is telling them that every human, no matter what they are, they are in the sight of the Lord. So, Paul here brings two important issues. Or Paul makes two important statements from verses 9 to 18. From verses 9 to 10, Paul talks about the sin is a universal problem. Sin is a universal problem. In verse 9, he highlights two important issues. That sin touches every race. And sin touches every religion. If you are a human being, you can't be away from sin. So sin has, or sin will be the part of our lives. Paul tells us that sin is a problem that affects both the Jew as well as the Gentile. Regardless of the color of the skin, regardless of the place, regardless of the background. No one is exempted from the stain of sin. He may be a white, he may be a black, or he may have any kind of, or they may have any kind of color. All human beings are sinners in the sight of God. So Paul says that, it is a universal problem. So sin is a universal problem. It touches every race. Coming to the same verse, verse 9, it touches every religion. It touches not only every race, but also it touches every religion. So 
in this world all the religions talks about sin and they have different names to come out of sin some call in the christianity it is called as salvation whereas some people call it as moksha some call it as nirvana the so on and so forth so paul tells us that jews and the pagans are both sinners it matters not how dedicated they may be to their religion or how they continue to be good in their religion but paul says that are we better that they no in wise paul tells his christian readers that there is no different that anyone else that all human beings are sinners there is no way to escape from the creator or the lord almighty coming to the 10th verse paul talks about that the sin tarnishes all righteousness the sin tarnishes all righteousness here god talks about the sinner he looks at them and says that no man has the ability to produce righteousness in fact the bible tells us that the best way can we produce in the flesh is filthy rags in the sight of god as isaiah quotes in 64th chapter 6th verse the best we can do is to obey the will of god the problem with that idea is that jesus said that we had to possess or we have to have the perfect righteousness to get into heaven so the verses 9 to 10 talks about that sin is a universal problem and in the verse 9 paul addressed two issues that it touches every religion it touches every race and coming to verse 10 paul said that it tarnishes all righteousness coming to the second insight from verses 11 to 18 paul says that it is an ugly problem paul says that firstly he has said that it is an universal problem and secondly from verses 11 to 18 paul says that sin is an ugly problem so no one can get away from sin it is a universal problem so as even the scripture says that we are born in this world from the mother's womb from the mother's womb with the sin so we can't get away from the sin the secondly paul says from verses 11 to 18 saying that sin is an ugly problem the sinful nature of human will always manifest itself in their lives these verses tells all about the problems that human has because they are the sinners these statements prove that while sin is a universal problem everybody must deal with it it is also an ugly problem it is not only an universal problem but is it is also an ugly problem so coming to verse 10 paul as i said earlier from verses 10 to verses 18 paul makes it a poetry paul makes it as a poetry by quoting different verses from different psalms and also from isaiah chapter 59 verse 7 so paul summed up all these things from verses 11 to 18 so the verse 10 talks about that sin has tarnished our spirit that sin has tarnished our spirit verse 10 talks about that so as it is written there is no one who is righteous not even one so this has already been touched on but the fact that we are sinners is why we are barred for entering into the presence of god simply stated we are wicked to the core of being humans that which bothers us very much we might find some who seem to be better than others but when they are judged by the standard 
the perfect righteousness of God himself. Then they are judged. So verse 10 says that there is no one who is righteous, not even one, except God. So, the universal problem of the sin has been addressed here. And which has tarnished our spirit. Verse 11 talks about that the sin has tarnished our senses. It has tarnished our sense organs. Verse 11. There is no one who has, who has understanding. There is no one who seeks God. This verse teaches the terrible truth that sin has dulled or sin has dimmed or sin has emptied our mind to the truth of the God which is universal. We cannot understand God and there is not a single person in this world who will seek God to let to himself. Nobody just decides to go after God. When a person begins to hunger for the Lord, it is the work of God in his spirit. Man is a rebel or human beings are rebel by their nature and they are dead as it is referred in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Until the Lord quickens their hearts and creates hunger in human for God. And John clearly mentions in chapter 6 verse 44 of his gospel. Sin has left us with spiritual damage. The sin has left us with spiritual damage. So verse 12 talks as, let me read it for you. The sin has tarnished our souls. Verse 12, all have turned aside together. They have become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness. There is not even one. There is no kindness in the human beings. This verse makes the accusation that all sinners are wayward and worthless in the presence of the Lord. It is the same idea that has been mentioned in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 or that is pictured in the parable of the lost sheep which is recorded in the gospel of Luke chapter 15 verses 3 to 7. The picture is the one who is unstable to the Lord. Not only has the sinful mind that which has damaged our spirits. All have turned aside together. They have become worthless because the sin has made them. Although they are worth, but the sin had overtaken the worthy in them or the worthful character in them and had made them very worthless and they have become useless people in the presence of the Lord. From the human standpoint, there is a difference between their works and from our vantage point we see that some people work good while the others work evil. However, from God's point, God looks all our works as they appear beside his righteousness and that leaves us guilty in his sight. So the verse 12 says that all have tarnished our souls. The sin has tarnished our souls. And verse 10 said as it is recorded earlier, sin tarnished our spirit, sin tarnished our senses, sin tarnished our souls and sin has verses 13 and 14 talks that their throats, their throat are opened graves. They use their tongues to deceive. They women. The venom of vipers is under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. So the sin has tarnished their word, their speech, their communication, the word that comes from their hearts. And he, he clearly says that there is, is a poison. They speak the words which are filled of damaging, which makes through their words they kill people. They kill people. 
it is a poisonous words that they speak so verses 13 to 14 talks about sin has tarnished our speech the words so paul now moves to tell that sin has ruined our speech the word he is merely echoing the words of lord jesus christ as it is recorded in matthew's gospel chapter 12 verses 34 and 35 it is fact that by your words will reveal the condition of whatever you speak it comes from your heart so the words that come from your mouth will show the nature of your hearts that is what even our lord has spoken to us so it is like a smell of rotten corpse it is filled with lies and deception and the words that comes are like a deadly poison and the words that come from our mouth are creating a devastating power so the words that come from our mouth are like rotten it smells smells if you see a rotten egg or a rotten fruit a spoiled fruit it stinks it smells and it also it decays the surroundings so sin decays the surroundings and it lies with it is filled with lies and deceiving others they don't speak the truth they always lie so some people they are with that kind of nature and they paul even goes to an extent saying that their words will kill or it, the words are like a deadly poison and from that words that words are create are, are been portrayed as a weapon as well as a devastating power so that is what paul records from verses 13 to 14 the sin that tarnished our words our speech and coming to verses 15 to 17 paul says that the sin has tarnished our steps our walk our walk our the way we walk so verses 15 to 17 their feet are swift to shed blood <coughs> ruin and misery are in their paths and the way of peace they have not known so verse 15 he says that we are quick to shed blood so always some people are very much interested to go and fight with someone shedding of blood shedding of blood which means interested in killing others living at the expenses of the others that is what we have observed during this past week people getting benefited by killing others by killing others and killing others in the name of religion and finally using the word of god to justify the deeds that is what paul says and verse 16 paul the people are growing more and more brutal in verse 16 paul says that their ruin and misery are their paths so they are becoming brutally brutal day by day day by day and verse 17 people do not really want to live in peace because they don't want to live in a peaceful atmosphere they don't want to live in a peaceful circumstance circumstance so they don't want really have peace they wanted to create chaos and be benefited that's what happening around the globe for the last few days so people are going growing more and more brutally and people do not really want to live in peace that is what paul quotes so he says from verses 15 to 17 sin has tarnished our steps finally in verse 18 paul says that sin has tarnished our sight let me read it for you there is no fear of god before their eyes they don't have fear of god and as it is written in the book of psalms the fear of the lord is the beginning of the wisdom so they don't want to have the wisdom they don't have fear for god they live as they want the last charge against the sinners tells that that humankind possess no fear for god this is why he they are able to do all other things that is why they are living as they want 
so paul here clearly talks about the practical atheism paul clearly talks about the practical atheism that is what practiced in the church in rome so paul was addressing this issue issue this kind of people know there is god and also they knows there is hell and they don't practice what god had said them or god what they have what god had directed them so they live away from the restrictions in their own way so it goes to an extent saying that as it is mentioned in psalm 141 full say there is no god so they live as if they want so looking into the law cannot save us living out the law cannot save us that is why we have to live in christ and that is the reason why god said that jesus himself said i have come not to abolish the law but to fulfill the law so by doing this paul says by summing up this 11 to 18 verses paul highlights three important things from this few verses the first one is character 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 is very important character is very important so paul from verses 8 to or the scriptures that we have read this evening from 9 to 18 paul highlights three important things first one is the character do we have the right character as the called out community as the believers of the lord as a church as a community do we have the right character that is what paul is asking us and even the lord is asking us to this to us this evening do we have right character if character is lost everything is lost if character is lost everything is lost people they don't have good character some of them but they practice all these things secondly what paul wanted to say is tongue the speech the speech is very important what comes from our mouth some people speak very flowery language but inside it is filled completely with poison women when mon that's what paul is saying our speech should communicate comfort to the people those who are in need our character should reflect our lord our speech should communicate good news our speech should communicate comfort our speech should communicate guidance as christians as a the called out person to do god's ministry as a pastor i should have a character which will reflect god as a christian as a believer of the church as a believer of the lord jesus christ our character should reflect our lord our speech should motivate our speech should transform many people our speech should give helping hand our speech should give comfort and finally paul talks about the conduct the conduct it's very important character and conduct should go hand in hand should have that is the reason why when the student or the student when a student comes out from the college or from the school they give a conduct certificate mostly all the conduct certificates are written satisfactory yeah all the conduct certificates are written satisfactory they want write the best or good they write satisfactory sometimes it goes to good and no one will write the best student because our conduct is very important the way we live the way we practice the way we communicate the way we associate our conduct should be 
acceptable to thee in the sight of God. So from verses 11 to from verses 9 to 18, Paul in nutshell brings three important things. Before getting into that, let me remind once again that sin is a universal problem. And second thing, sin is an ugly problem. And finally, Paul brings three important things. The character. Second one is the speech, the tongue, and the conduct. Friends, do we have the right character? Do we have the right speech? Do we have the right conduct? Let me conclude. Paul is very clear, clear that we are all sinners in the sight of the Lord. There is only one solution for our sin. That we should have the personal relationship with God. In order to have the personal relationship with God, we should have these three important qualities. The character, the speech and the conduct. So, these are the things that Paul tries to... So, we should feel ourselves as mirrors. So, if we have these three important characters, three important insights, the character, the speech and the conduct, definitely we would reflect not only us, but we will reflect God in our lives. May the Lord add his blessings to thee, listening and understanding us of the Holy Word. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. God, our creator and our sustainer, as this evening we have heard from you, Lord, our lives are, are, are as mirrors in your sight. Let us reflect not ourselves. Let us reflect you in us. Let us reflect you in us. So that we carry out the insights that you have brought us this evening. Let us have make us to have the right character. Help us to have the right speech. And let us live with the right conduct. So that we reflect you in our lives. Lord, make us to examine where we have gone wrong. So that we will be a channel of blessing to many people in this society. Make us to be a channel of blessing to the people, those who are in need. Lord, thank you for being with us. Thank you for speaking to us. Once again, we give you all glory and honor. We pray for all the friends, those who are listening to this word. Bless them. Take care of all their needs. Help us to be a transformers of this world. Help us to be in the people, those who reflect you in our lives. We give you all glory and honor. We ask this prayer in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the comforting guidance of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.